From its source in the Tibetan Plateau, the Mekong River travels over 4,000 kilometers through six countries, eventually flowing through a vast delta in Vietnam into the South China Sea. Southeast Asia is rapidly developing and hungry for power. It is only natural that the Mekong and its tributaries are being looked at for their hydropower potential. Eighty kilometers downstream from the UNESCO World Heritage City of Luang Prabang is the site of the Sayaburi Dam. Its development by the Lao government has proved controversial. If it is built, critics argue it has the potential to significantly alter the Mekong's ecosystem, jeopardizing livelihoods and food security for millions downstream. We are using international standards for the development of the Sanyaburi power project. We have acquired international consultants with a lot of experience, even though it is a little bit expensive. And these are the things that should comfort the people and the you know, neighboring countries that we are doing in a very transparent way. Sanyaburi will be built as a transparent dam a structure its developers claim will have a negligible impact on the river. The dam will be able to flush sediment, have navigation locks, and multiple fish passage systems. The dam will generate over 7,000 gigawatt hours of electricity a year, all of which will be sold to Thailand. In turn, this is valuable for a developing country such as Laos and will, the government says, contribute to the country's growth and the livelihoods of its people. However, no one can truly predict the long-term impacts of a dam, so the precautionary principle is a good thing to follow. The governments of Vietnam, Cambodia, and from around the world have called for more studies before going ahead. <laughs> If Sayaburi is built, it will be the first of many dams on the Mekong south of China. So it is important that the developers get it right and set a high standard for all others to follow. In western Laos, the recently completed Thern Hinbun expansion dam is considered by the Lao government and others a major environmental and social success story. The dam is built on the Nam Nuang River and its main body reservoir is about 35 kilometers long. According to the company, about 4,000 people have been resettled by the project, and each is entitled to an improved standard of living and a sustainable livelihood as a consequence of their relocation. The main function of the expansion dam is to store water for the Thun Hinbun power project, an older dam located downstream of the reservoir. The Thun Hinbun is a trans-basin run-of-river power project that diverts river water into a lower basin to generate electricity. The Thun Hinbun and the expansion dam are considered relatively well-implemented projects, providing close attention to resettlement. Resettlement, however, is tricky. People live near the river because there is good agricultural land. If they are moved off, it is more difficult to find equally fertile places, so they need support over time to help them adjust.
In southern Laos, the Mekong River widens and forms a complex network of narrow channels known as the 4,000 Islands. It is also home to the famed Cone Falls, the largest falls in Southeast Asia. The falls drop more than 20 meters as the Mekong rushes towards the Cambodia border, only two kilometers away. It is here, close by the falls, where yet another controversial Mekong Dam has been proposed, the Don Sahong. I'm standing um, where the powerhouse of the uh, Don Sahong hydropower project would be built. Uh, here, Hu Sahong, the channel is about 100 meter wide and uh, the powerhouse was spent in a, in a concrete balance across this uh, section of the channel with the embankment on the left and on the right running to form a hip pond to generate the power, not to store water. Mr. Yong is project manager for the dam and has many years of experience managing hydropower projects. The proposed Don Sahong Dam is about one-fourth the size and power output of the Sayaburi Dam. It will be built on the Hu Sahong Channel that is known as a super highway for seasonal fish migration. The Hu Sahong is the deepest channel in that part of the river and fish pass easily through it at the height of the dry season migration when the Mekong is at its lowest water level. Critics claim that damming this channel will adversely impact the dry season fish migration between the habitats of the Thonle Sap Lake in Cambodia and breeding areas upstream in Laos and Thailand. Mr. Yong, however, is convinced he can build a dam that meets local and national environmental and social standards. And he's also convinced he can save the dry season fish migration and perhaps even improve on it. We have done a very detailed environmental impact assessment, social impact assessment, and also the environmental and uh, social management plans. All these have been submitted to the, um, uh, the various uh, agencies of the Laos government. To protect the dry season fish migration, the project plans to enhance alternative fish passageways in adjacent channels. One channel, the Ho Saddam Channel, is littered with old navigation markers and pylons from the French colonial period. At one time, small ships and barges moved along the channel because there were no rapids. We are in the Hu uh, Saddam and going upstream. And this is the channel that we will use as an alternative channel for fish migration. We're going to clean up the inlet and outlet of this channel to allow more water to and then also easier passage for the fish to come in, whether, whether downstream or upstream. The only problem is that there is insufficient water in the dry season for the volume of fish to migrate. So we will increase the volume so that it is sufficient for the fish migration. We will remove the sandbar and some logs in the inlet. By cleaning out the channels on either side of the dam site, the dam builders believe that there will be sufficient water flow through the dry season to allow fish to migrate, making up for the closing of the Hu Sahong channel. Dams on the Mekong and its tributaries are not that easy to get approved. Even though the Don Sahong has its environmental impact assessment and other assessments approved by the Lao government, it now must submit all these scientific and social reports to the Mekong River Commission. This will provide the other Lower Mekong Basin countries with valuable information about the dam. But as in the case of the Saiburi, the government of Lao can choose for itself how it wants to proceed. Laos has enormous hydropower potential and for the government this represents a legitimate way of lifting the country out of poverty. For others, though, the long-term environmental and social consequences outweigh these short-term benefits. 
Whatever the case, hydropower development on the Mekong has a lot of moving parts and it is difficult to address them all sufficiently.